Shaders are algorithms that blend the primary visual components together. By default, we've been using the Blin shader, named after a computer graphics pioneer. We've been using the Blin basic parameters rollout. Blin is probably the most commonly used shader. It's a general purpose shader that works for a wide variety of different kinds of materials. But there are many other choices here that I'd like to go through with you. The most similar shader to Blin is Fong. Fong is historically an older shader, and the difference is very subtle. It has to do with the shape of the specular highlight. The Fong shader is round, whereas the Blin shader is a little bit elliptical. Another popular shader is the anisotropic shader. And this word basically means not the same thing. Unfortunately, we lost the ambient color when we changed shaders. Let me set the ambient color back to blue so that we can compare apples to apples. Now, if you look at the sample slot here, you'll notice that the specular highlight is oval shape. And you can see that here also in the plane. This is because the anisotropic shader allows you to have two different specular highlights. And by default, the amount of anisotropy is 50%. If I set that to zero, this shader will look just like Blin. We have two intersecting graphs here. And by increasing the anisotropy, it will make this graph different, which has the effect of shaping the specular highlight. This has to do with the molecular structure of surfaces and how, that they, how they reflect light in different directions. Anisotropic is a good shader for simulating highly reflective objects like glass and even metal, although there are special purpose shaders for metals. Orientation controls the direction that that specular highlight is reflecting. The most complex shader is multi-layer and it's essentially two layers of anisotropic shaders. Again, we lost the ambient color. I'll change that back to blue again. And now we can make a more honest comparison. This has two graphs with two different colors that can be used. Here I'll use a cyan color and I need to increase the level of the second layer if we're going to see it. And now we can see cyan color here interacting with the yellow color of the first layer. So this can create a more sophisticated shiny area. And notice that each layer has anisotropic controls that allow you to shape those components like that. By default these are perpendicular to each other so that we have kind of a cyan here and a yellow area here. If you want to simulate metal there are two shaders for that. There's the obviously titled metal shader and there's also Strauss. The metal shader doesn't allow you to give a specular color. Instead, you can just increase the level and glossiness here. Notice that the graph has a different shape compared to the other shaders. There's a hollowed out spot in the middle, and this has to do with the way that metals tend to reflect light more as glancing highlights, so the intensity is a little bit greater on the edges of the specular zone. So let me boost up the specular level a bit and change the glossiness. 
So this would be a brushed metal that has a rough surface, the opposite of glossiness. And this would be a polished metal surface. Strauss is the simplest shader, having only one color. The glossiness parameter changes both the specular level and the glossiness at the same time. And interestingly, this has a metalness parameter, which varies the shader in the way that the algorithm works to make it look more like polished metal the more you increase this parameter. There are two other shaders to talk about. There is the Oren Nair Blin, or ONB shader. And this is a popular shader. It's best used to simulate matte surfaces. So that I can make a fair comparison, I will set the ambient color to blue and the specular col color to yellow. Looking at the sample sphere, it looks very smooth. We can have some specular level and some glossiness here. But you'll notice that the specular area is really de-emphasized here. It's not very important. Thus, this shader is great for matte surfaces. Note it also has a roughness parameter that allows you to subtly affect the shading as it is blended between the different components. Finally, there's a translucent shader. And this is used to simulate opaque materials primarily that have light that goes into some depth into the material where it scatters. And this is good for simulating frosted glass. Again, I'll set the ambient color to blue. And the translucency is controlled here with a color. I'll give it a cyan translucency. And you'll notice that the translucent effect occurs primarily in the ambient zone, where the light is glancing into the surface and scattering. 